the lecture. Okay, um, this is my college of virology. Our topic, our first topic for the midterms would be picornaviruses or picorna, picornaviruses, no? Okay, uh, let me just start my lecture by showing you this table. Now, this table would actually help you in identifying virus. There's so many viruses in, in so many textbooks in microbiology, but all I want you to remember is this table for the next couple of weeks. Okay, so this table is actually the RNA viruses. If you would notice in this table, there are double-stranded and there are single-stranded. Now, our topic is picornaviruses, calici viruses, and astroviruses. So, um, I want you to make sure na ito lang ang alam nyo for this afternoon. Okay? How do you memorize this one? Look at this table. They are all single-stranded. They are all positive sense. They are all naked. And they are all icosahedral. So for this specific topic, Kalichi, Picorna, and Astroviruses, they are all in this red boxes. Okay? Kahit pagbalik ta rin ko yung mga yan, envelope ba sila, helical ba sila, don't mind those uh, terms. They are all single-stranded, positive sense, naked, and icosahedral. Okay? And now let's start with Picorna viruses. Okay? Uh, picornaviruses, there are uh, numerous types of picornaviridae. That's the family. Enterovirus, these are the following. You have the poliovirus types 1, 2, and 3. Your Coxsackie viruses, A, 24 types. And B, Coxsackie B virus, they have 6 types. Your echovirus, your parechovirus, and your enterovirus. Which we will be discussing this in a little bit later. Another... Um, member of the Picornaviridae would be the hepatovirus. Specifically class, it's the hepatitis A virus. Okay. What else? The rhinovirus, which contains more than 100 types. Ito po, the rhinovirus is also known as your common colds. Okay. Very timely because of this pandemic, no? Rhinovirus. And another member of your Picorna would be cardiovirus and aftovirus. Well, basically, we will be discussing the three major members of your picornaviridae, your entero, your hepatovirus, which is your HEPA A, and your rhinovirus. Okay. Uh, generally speaking, this table will just show us the general description of your picornavirus. It looks really complicated. Yes, I know. But if you just know this table, tapos na agad yung table na yun. Okay. Just memorize this table and you will be you will pass the midterm exam under my lectures. Now, this description or characteristic of picornavirus, let's start with the variant. They are non-enveloped. The genome would be positive sense, non-segmented. How do they replicate? Uh, the mechanism of replication will be discussed further, but in general, the picornavirus replication with the usual biochemical processes. Now, the RNA synthesis, which occurs in cytoplasm, sorry, cytoplasmic replication uh, containing the RNA structures at the 5' prime to 3' prime ends, and that will serve as your primer for a synthesis of both RNA strands. Okay? Um, host ranges. Now, there are at least five of the seven classes of vertebrates, and that includes us. Okay? This is the morphology. As mentioned a while ago, there are positive sense. There are single-stranded RNA, non-enveloped with no projections capsid. Okay? So this one, this is the morphological characteristic of your picornavirus. Okay? This is another illustration on the different types of picornavirus. We have the enterovirus. That includes the rhinovirus. Your enterovirus and specific including the hepatitis A virus, the cardo, and the apto. But you have to take note of the different, the most important ones. Okay. All right. In this slide, this would talk about the replication of your uh, picornaviruses. 
Now, it involves in VP1 attachment to specific receptor, and this one will create a channel. Now, just like in any other replication of the virus, it all begins to the attachment and um, dire -direction na yan, and coating. But for the replication of the pre virus, please take note of the VP4. Okay? It will release and its genome will be injected directly. Where? The, the genome will bind directly to the ribosomes and that the synthesis and cleavage will take place. All right? What else? The structural proteins in the replication of picornavirus are actually VP0, VP1, and VP3. They are all cleaved to form the pentamer, what we call your procapsid. The, the VPO is cleaved into VP2 and VP4 to complete the capsid. Now look at this illustration. After this capsid, the, the, after the packaging, variants will release on cell lysis and that the replication take place, okay? But all I want you to remember for this slide is the VP1 attachment and the VP the VP4 together with the structural proteins that will make up the pentamer procapsid for the P coronaviruses. Okay, yeah, and let's let's talk about some not non technical stuff. So this is the disease mechanism of your picoina viruses. Um, generally speaking, they are all enters via our oropharynx. Okay? Look at this picture. The enteroviruses enter the oropharynx, internal mucosa, or upper respiratory tract, and they will infect the lymphatic tissue. Okay? Now, rhinoviruses, take note here, the rhinoviruses are restricted only to the upper respiratory tract. So what does that mean? It does not affect the lower respiratory tract, and that includes the trachea down to the lungs. That's only, for, that's only applicable for the rhinoviruses. Okay? Now, the mechanism of piconoviruses, in the absence of a serum antibodies, your enterovirus spreads by viremia. Okay? What do you mean by viremia? Uh, that's the presence of virus in the blood. And what do you mean by primary? That's the first um, uh, encounter with the virus no? in the absence of a serum antibodies. They will enter the enter, enterovirus, spreads by viremia to cells of a receptor bearing target tissue. So if this is their enterovirus, Without any antibody blockage, no, and uh, ito ang mga target tissue niya, which will be um, projected in this slide. Okay, uh, different picornaviruses will bind to different receptors, and many of which are members of the immunoglobulin superfamily. No? that includes their intercellular adhesion molecule one. What do you mean by intercellular adhesion molecule one? That's very um, specific, not specific for this picornavirus, but they belong to immunoglobulin. When we say immunoglobulin, you are, we are talking about antibodies, right? Now, in this primary viremia, if, this, if you have a first encounter or first, um, yeah, first encounter with this virus, you call it primary viremia, no? Uh, if you don't have any antibodies, obviously this will be blocked. But if you don't have any antibodies, target tissue such as the following will manifest in our patient. Okay? Now, the infected target tissue will determine the subsequent disease depends on its target tissues. Viral rather than immune, no? when you say viral pathologic effects are usually responsible for causing a specific disease. Now, it says here, the secretory antibody response is transitory, not permanent, but can be prevent the in initiation of your infection. So, ibig sabihin, antibody really blocks this viremic spread to target disease. Ibig sabihin, if you have antibodies against it, primary viremia or infection caused by the coronavirus will be prevented. Okay? What are the other significant mechanisms of the coronavirus? Enterovirus is shed in feces 
for long periods of time. Doc, sabi nyo, sa respiratory tract, o oh, diba, it enters in the respiratory tract, but because of viral infection, viral manifestation, primary viremia, it can actually go to different organ systems, including the GI tract. Okay? Now, please take note. Lagyan nyo to ng asterisk. Infection of the apicornal viruses is often asymptomatic or causes mild flu-like or upper respiratory tract diseases. Okay? They just cause a, a, a mild flu-like symptoms or as, even asymptomatic. Kailangan ba na antibiotics? Doc, sabi ni Doc, hindi. Kasi we are, en- we are entertaining a viral infection. Okay, so there is no uh, no antibiotic treatment for this type of infection. Okay, as mentioned a while ago, if you have this target tissue, ito po ang mga target tissue. Let's start with the skin. Skin can cause hand, foot, and mouth disease. Now, these are, these, there are presence of rashes or hair pangina, which will be discussed later. And the causative agent of this hand, foot, mouth disease Usually, it's echovirus or Coxsackie A. Okay. Next, when you when the target organ would be muscle, echovirus, Coxsackie A, and B can either cause myocarditis or it goes to a thorax. We call this pleurodynia, which will be discussed again in a while. When the virus enters the brain, uh, poliovirus and Coxsackie A7, to be specific, can actually cause two. It can cause paralysis or paralytic disease and encephalitis. Okay. What about meninges? If a uh, uh, picorna virus such as echo, polio, and Coxsackie virus as well, they can cause meningitis. Meningitis, uh, science of meningitis would include number one, fever, headache, and nuchal rigidity. No? Um, ito yung... Or, Sometimes, the patient can actually manifest with um, increased sleeping time. What else? Sometimes, loss of consciousness, seizure. But most commonly, the meningitis, its clinical manifestation are fever, headache, and uh, neck rigidity. Okay? And lastly, its target tissue when it comes to liver, you, co- you may develop hepatitis A. And this common illnesses caused by picornal viruses will be discussed in detail in a while. Okay? Ayan. So let's start with hepatitis A virus. We have, I think, hepatitis A, B, C, D, and E. For this afternoon session, we will be discussing two of hepatitis. That's hepatitis A and E. But first, let's discuss hepatitis A virus. This is also called your infectious hepatitis. It is an RNA virus, obviously, based on the table that I've shown you. Uh, what are the manner or modes of transmission of hepatitis A? Look, due to consumption of a contaminated water or consumption of your shellfish and other food products. Sometimes, class, consumption of um, contaminated food only. You must eat foods. Yan, common yan, ang hepatitis A. Hepatitis A virus is formerly called your enterovirus 72, and there are, sometimes this HEPA A is placed into own genus called your hepatovirus since they cause a uh, liver problem. That's the term HEPA. Okay, this is the general characteristic of your hepatitis A. Um, they are stable to number one acid, just like your gastric acid in the stomach, solvents, detergents, Salt water and drying. Okay. Uh, what else? Wag nyo intindihin to. No? These are just um, most commonly asked questions. The stable, the virus is stable at this pH and at this common uh, solvents and detergents. Okay. Now, going back to its characteristic of picorna viruses, they are naked. Yes. They are icosahedral. Positive sense, single-stranded RNA. Tapos, na? Um, basically, if they are if they belong to one family, they they have the, they have the same characteristics or general characteristics. 
Okay, what else? Now, uh, a Ticona virus contains a VPG protein that will attach to the 5 prime end. This one is the VPG protein. They will be attached to the 5 prime end and a polyadenylate sequence attached to the 3 prime end. Now, what does that mean? Um, the structure of hepatitis A only has one serotype, but it has multiple genotype. No? Ayan ang isa sa characteristic feature ng hepatitis A. One serotype, but multiple genotype. Now, how do they replicate? Now, like any other picorna viruses, they interact with HAV cell receptor 1 glycoprotein. Now, for this specific virus, HAV kasi class hepatitis A virus. So, just like sabi dito, just like other picorna viruses, depends on the uh, the type or member of that virus, kaya tinawag na cell receptor dapat yet. Cell receptor 1, glycoprotein. But if you are talking about hepatitis A virus, kaya meron siyang HAB. Okay? Now, also known as your T-cell immunoglobulin and mucin domain protein, that's the HAV1 glycoprotein, they are expressed in liver cells and T-cells. Now, um, as you've learned throughout your first year and second year, when we are dealing with liver cells and T-cells, Immune system is also affected as well as your um, liver. Now, that's the main focus of your hepatitis A virus. Now, look at the replication. They are not cytolytic. Now, the viral replication will just release by exocytosis, but they are not cytolytic, meaning they don't kill the cells. Thus, look. Look at the pathogenesis. As mentioned kanina, the manner of transmission of this hepatitis A virus is through ingestion of contaminated food or uh, shellfish or any contaminated water or food for that matter, which contains your hepatitis A. Right? Now, as uh, the virus enters the oral cavity, it goes to your digestive system, it crosses intestines. After crossing the intestine, it goes to the virus after reabsorbing in the blood the virus, through a viremia process, it goes to your uh, liver. Now, thus the term hepatitis A. What does it do? It will be excreted in the bile. No, as you all know, bile is produced in the liver. It is also stored in the gallbladder. But once it is, um, it is a component of a bile, the bile now will interact with the food that we intake and then it will be excreted in the stool. Okay, ganyan po ang pathogenesis ng hepatitis A. So, Doc, nakakamatay ba siya? If you would ask me, no. Okay, now this is a very important table. What are the initial symptoms of your hepatitis A virus? It, 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 it contains uh, fever, fatigue, nausea, loss of appetite, vomiting, and abdominal pain. If you look at these initial symptoms of hepatitis A, you really would consider at the emergency room or at your clinic, if you ever you become a doctor, eh, may acute gastroenteritis na yung pasyente. Okay? Doc, ano yung sabihin, acute gastroenteritis? Your patient is presented with just fever, diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal pain. No? Look at this table. This is the level of concentration of your antibodies as opposed to your weeks of infection. Okay? Look at the zero week, this one, you ingested a virus. Specifically, let's say hepatitis A virus. In one to two weeks time, that's your incubation period, wala pang masyadong symptoms dyan. Okay? Uh, usually, not to tell you honestly, the virus is actually mas makikita sa feces. No? So if you are that um, strict when it comes to diagnosing hepatitis A at the first day or second day of your patient who is presenting with fever, vomiting, the, the stuff like this, you really will request toll culture. It's not common in the ER setting here at the Philippines. No? Hindi tayo nagpapas toll culture at the first uh, few days of the um, patient's symptomatology. But if you look here, 
the virus in the feces during these first to four weeks or first three weeks is very high. It's very detectable. Okay? If, uh, here, the virus is detectable in liver biopsy and feces during this third week until eight weeks of time. Please take note of this. Okay? The virus is detectable in liver biopsy and feces at the time of third week to eight week. But, okay, but it is not common, commonly uh, done in the outpatient or at the ER setting. Okay? Hindi yan masyadong ginagawa na magpapabiopsy ka ng, ng, ng liver and feces. Okay? Usually, sa blood test lang tayo. Alright. Um, during this time, when this virus, okay, sorry, when this virus starts to decrease, what would happen is that nakita nyo yung yellow class at the fourth week, nagsastart na siyang tumaas. Ano yung tumataas or naging detectable? It's our antibodies against your hepatitis A virus. Ah, kaya pala, the virus, which is our antigen, when it starts to decrease, your antibodies will start to increase. Specifically, your IgM. That's for acute infection. Okay? Take note of this, ha? As the virus uh, decreases, your antibody starts to increase. The first antibody to increase would be the HAV-specific IgM. Now, during this time, when the antibodies now increases, look at this one. You have you will experience ecteric symptoms for some patients and sometimes you will be presenting with an elevated serum liver enzymes. Ano po doc yung serum liver enzymes? These are your SGPT, SGOT, alkaline phosphatase, but not all serum liver enzymes. Okay? If you, if you have a relative or patients na merong liver or na merong zondis, ecteric yung sclera nila, yellow ang skin nila, uh, please don't um, forget to ask for a liver enzymes because sometimes or almost all patients who have done this will be having an increased serum liver enzyme. Again, I repeat, these are SGPT, SGOT, and alkaline phosphatase. Um, sometimes, pa class, if the jaundice is really severe, we can ask for bilirubin. No? Bilirubin. That's the. Um, that's also. You may also detect what type of jaundice if bilirubin are requested. Okay. Okay. What else? Now, if you look look at this seventh week of infection, roughly seven to eight weeks. Your HAV specific IgM starts to decrease, and that's the time at the fifth week, sixth week, or seventh weeks, depending. The HAV specific IgG now will be elevated. After it elevates, it will form a plateau. No, steady na yan. Ibig sabihin, you have already an antibodies against hepatitis A virus. Okay. Fun fact. No, for your information, I have high HAV specific IgG. Okay, ako po, ako talaga. No, kapag ipapahepa profile nyo, ako mataas ang IgG ko sa HEPA A. Uh, so, Doc, ibig sabihin na hepatitis A ka na? Yes, but I'm asymptomatic. Siguro, sometime in my childhood, when I presented with acute gastroenteritis, I, I acquired hepatitis A, but hindi ako na-hospitalized. No? I didn't even know na may hepatitis A pala ako na history. Kaya if you want to know if you have hepatitis A during your childhood years, you request for an HAV IgG. Because that will determine if you've been uh, contracted hepatitis A virus before. Okay? Diba? I don't may hepatitis A pala. Pero I don't have any symptoms. I do not know, ha? Huh? Um... Uh, kung nagka-jondis ako, but siguro during my childhood, na, nagkaroon ako ng ganitong symptoms, yung pala hepatitis A na. Okay? How do we diagnose hepatitis A? Clinical symptoms. No? Um, majority of viral infections, not just purely in as a lab, laboratory or as a med tech or laboratory scientist, we don't just rely mainly on the um, 
blood test. Okay? Yes, it's for confirmatory, but for an easy diagnosis, you have to recognize first the signs and symptoms, and that's what we call your clinical symptoms. We, the one, we can diagnose um, an, a medical condition based on symptoms. Number two, this one. You request for an anti-HAV, IgM, and IgG. If your, pre, if your patient presents with uh, acute gastroenteritis, fever, diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting, or if ever may join this, you don't uh, forget to request for an anti-HAV, IgM, or IgG. Doc, ano pong significant sang IgM or IgG? Very easy. When IgM is positive, you have an acute infection. You have it right now. But if you are, if your IgG is positive, you don't have the virus, but you had hepatitis A virus before. Okay? As easy as that. Um, mas specific, no, it's the gold standard, would be the RT-PCR of a viral RNA. Ano kukunin sample dito? Hindi din po nasopharyngeal swab or whatsoever. Usually, feces. No? Feces, um, we can actually detect. The antibodies will be detected in the serum, but the RT-PCR of a viral RNA, meaning viral RNA, antigen na yan, um, in the feces at an early week. Sabi dito, uh, they are this, from the third week to eighth week, virus is detectable in liver biopsy and feces. As mentioned, liver biopsy is not um, uh, routinely done if, you, if the patient is presented with this. Now, you have to investigate for before you roll in hepatitis A. Okay, how do we treat, prevent, and control hepatitis A infection? Proper hand washing, chlorine treatment of drinking water. Um, as mentioned, baka yung patient natin nakuha uh, because of contaminated water. Prophylaxis with immune serum globulin killed HIV vaccine. Okay, for your information class, we have hepatitis A vaccines. No, uh, this is administered in two doses. If you uh, have the hepatitis A virus vaccine done today, after six months, that's uh, you have to receive your second dose of hepatitis A virus. Okay, please take note of this hepatitis A virus. They are administered in two doses, six months apart. Not one month, not one year, it's six months apart. Doc, pwede pa kami, paano natin malalaman na uh, kung pwede kang mag-hepa-hepa A virus? Check nyo, baka naman meron kayo antibodies no? in anti-HAV, IgM, and IgG. But if you want to check no, before you have the uh, HAV vaccine, magpa-titer muna kayo just like hepatitis B. No? When you say tartar, quantitatively, nade-detect nila kung gano'ng kadami yung antibodies mo. Uh, just like me, no, for your information, I, I, had, I received my COVID vaccine last March 1. And six months na ngayon, nagpa-tartar ako ng COVID vaccine two weeks ago. Uh, the detectable amount is 50. I had 200. No? Doc, marami ka palang antibodies. Yes, pero... Sinovac kasi yun. Okay? Pero yung my friend who had Pfizer vaccine in the US and then after six months nagpa-antibody titer siya, nagpa-check siya ng dugo ng antibodies, uh, he had 2,000. Okay? Compared to your 200 na Sinovac. But still, it's still a detectable level of antibodies. Uh, you'll be protected pa rin against COVID. Pero, magka-COVID ka pa rin. Just like here in Hepatitis A, if you want to detect, if you had hepatitis A, you request for HAV, IgM, or IgG. Okay? So this is just a clinical example of hepatitis A. No? A 27-year-old female de develops fever, chills, headache, and fatigue after eating a greasy spoon uh, in a, in, at, at a greasy spoon diner. Within two days, she develops the following anorexia, vomiting, right upper quadrant abdominal pain, jaundice, dark color urine, and pale stool. These are all um, symptoms of a liver problem, right? Right upper quadrant, dyan yung liver ninyo. May jaundice, may dark color urine, meaning hindi na na, na metabolize ang bilirubin. Then after that, this persists for 12 days. 
then then the symptoms decrease right after with no antibiotics just purely supportive treatment hepatitis A will be uh, treated uh, will be resolved spontaneously just keep hydrating uh, you have to know it is hepatitis A and then sometimes talagang hydration is uh, the key especially if it is a viral infection okay so that ends the hepatitis A that's the first of the picornia viruses Let's go now to your enterovirus. Uh, this time, your enterovirus, just like this um, uh, table, yung kanina pinakita ko, your enterovirus also would be um, enters via respiratory route. They will replicate in the oropharynx and then it will go to your primary virima or in the bloodstream. If you don't have antibodies, Dere-derecho yan, target na tomato. So what are these enteroviruses? The ones that are in black. Yan, iisa-isahin natin yung enterovirus. Alright, they are exclusively of human pathogens. They are primarily spread via fecal oral rot. So just like your hepatitis A, your enterovirus, yun, pwede, ayan, mouth, and via respiratory, but mostly the enterovirus. Kaya nga entero, parang gastroenteritis. They will, they will um, enter in your system through your fecal oral route. Doc, paano yung fecal oral route? Um, nahawakan mo ba yung pupu tapos nasubo mo? Does not necessarily mean ganun. Okay? Any contamination of a human fecal matter uh, accidentally um, ingested by the oral route. That's the primary manner of transmission of this type of virus, your enterovirus. There are asymptomatic shedding of the virus. That's because of a poor sanitation and crowded living condition. Uh, also, one means or manner of transmission would be a sewage contamination of the water. Aerosol, droplets, minimal amount long, but, but primarily it's the uh, fecal oral route. Now, let's take a look at a sample of this um, illustration. Human fecal matter. No? Human fecal oral route. Pwedeng diretso sa hand. Okay, nahawakan mo, tapos nasubo mo accidentally. Sewage system, contamination, solid waste landfills. Of course, they will all go to our blood supply. Now, sometimes, um, if this water supply goes to our circulation, okay na sana eh, na, na, na filter na. But upon contamination of a shellfish or a contaminated shellfish na mayroong enterovirus, directly nakain natin. Okay? These are the modes of transmission of your enterovirus. Okay. Clinical syndromes, the incubation period of your enterovirus is 1 to 35 days. Now, they are affected by the several factors such as a serotype, infecting dose, um, tissue tropism, portal of entry. It could either affect it all by patient's age, gender, and state of health, and pregnancy. As you all know, when you are pregnant, you are also immunocompromised. No? You, you, you will be exposed to different viral pathogens or microorganisms Pero mas, mas malapit kang lapitan ng infection. Okay? What are these disease or viral factors? As mentioned kanina, uh, the severity correlates with the age, specific enterovirus. Uh, very resistant to environmental conditions such as this. That's why one of the, one of the manner of transmission is through sewage. Kaya kailangan meron ding uh, proper sanitation, proper uh, contamination, decontamination, of the sewage system regularly. No? Uh, kaya may chlorine dapat na kinukot. Even, even in the uh, swimming pool, how do you decontaminate your, your swimming pool is through chlorination. Right? Ayan, sabi dito, fecal oral rot, poor hygiene, dirty diapers, especially in daycare settings, ingestion via contaminated food and water, inhalation daw of aerosols, but mo more commonly, it's the fecal oral route. Ha? But it could happen. Inhalation of your infectious aerosols. Who is at risk? Young children. At risk for polio. Asymptomatic or mild. 
older children, adults at risk for polio, asymptomatic to paralytic. Now, this is the difference between the young children who have polio and older children and adults who develop polio at the later uh, at the later age. If you if a young child develop polio, usually mild disease slash or asymptomatic. But for the older children, adults who develop polio, it could be from asymptomatic to a paralytic condition of polio. Okay? For newborns and neonates, the highest risk for serious Coxsackie virus, echovirus, and enterovirus, the most risk are their newborns and their neonates because their immune system is decreased. Not immunocompromised, but decreased immune system. Okay? <clears throat> okay, how do we diagnose your enterovirus? The exact type of enterovirus can be determined through the use of number one, specific antibody antigen assays. Now, some of the um, serological methods used are your neutralization, immunofluorescence, ELISA, or your enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Um, ELISA is actually used for screening of your HIV or AIDS. Uh, what else? It, this, uh, the exact type of enterovirus can also be determined through the use of this RT-PCR or the reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction detection of your viral RNA. Um, we can use what type of specimens we can use. Um, or a pharyngeal swab, your rectal swab, your feces, or your blood. Depends kung anong timing na nyo na detect yung specific um pa pa uh, patient na what's 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 he what is he presenting kung meron bang ibang symptoms prime, uh, signs and symptoms but usually on the earlier stage of disease as mentioned the feces and liver biopsy is done for hepatitis A but for enterovirus it's usually the stool yan ang pinakaunang i-detect diyan mag diyan una makikita ang viral RNA okay um, okay, serology is used to confirm an enterovirus infection through this detection of your antibodies. As mentioned, um, finding of a four-fold increase in the antibody titer between the time of acute illness and the period of convalescence, usually IgM ang mataas if you have an acute illness or you are at the period of convalescence. But another antibodies, as mentioned kanina during hepatitis A, uh, discussion would be IgG. Okay. IgG is used for recovery or if you had a past infection that's very specific for that specific enterovirus. Okay. Again, IgM, you have it right now. IgG, you had a previous infection or, or a past infection. Okay. There are no vaccines for other enteroviruses. Okay, sadly, uh, transmission can be reduced by improvements in hygiene and living conditions. Your enterovirus are impervious to most common disinfectants and detergents. They can actually be uh, inactivated by formaldehyde, hypochlorite, and um, chlorine. <clears throat> so again, as, as mentioned, kanina hepatitis A mayroong vaccine, right? So, in, in most of the enteroviruses, or all enteroviruses, um, they don't have vaccines. That's uh, that's a must, no? No, wala pong enterovirus vaccine. Ayan. Okay? So, let's start with the poliovirus. Poliovirus is a wild-type polyvirus has been eliminated the before in the Western Hemisphere due to the advent of polio vaccines. Okay? The vaccine-related polio result from a VP1 gene mutation and the infectious poliovirus remain in sewage for a long time. Now, the spread of this poliovirus most often during the summer and autumn. Sadly, no? Sadly, um, two or three Three years ago, poliovirus re-enters now the Philippines, the Philippines um, healthcare. Um, it's a it's a concern. But uh, as declared like months ago, we are now polio free. Okay, polio free because of the vaccines. Nawala na tayong cases ng polio 
natakot lahat ng mga doctors na sinabi na may nagkaroon ulit ng polio. Um, polio um, disease sa Philippines kasi nga ibig sabihin hindi naging effective yung um, vaccination nila. Kasi nga because of the dengue vaccine scare, natakot na yung ibang mga mommies, parents na pabakunan yung mga anak nila ng polio. Eh actually, hindi magbakuna ang polio. It's, it, it's a form of prophylaxis treatment, oral polio vaccine dapat. Okay, oral polio vaccine. Okay, epidemiology, only three serotypes exist, polios 1, 2, and 3. And the name of the polio, meaning from polios, gray, and myelos, meaning marrow or spinal cord. So, ibig sabihin, mabilis papunta. At it can really affect the motor uh, activity of these patients with polio. Description of these pathologic lesions involve usually neurons in the gray matter. That's the term polios. Uh, especially at the anterior horn of the spinal cord. Now, if you notice, or if you would um, remember, the anterior horns of the spinal cord, they are responsible for its motor activity. Okay? The posterior horns, on the other hand, of the spinal cord, they are for sensory or sensation. Thus, um, polio really involves motor activity. The paralytic polio, once considered a middle class disease, so medyo may pagka-racist ang um, polio. Kapag may polio ka na, sa middle class ka daw. But this was totally eradicated na. Okay? 85% of the cases of the paralytic polio is due to type 1 polio virus. Okay? A reversion of the attenuated virus type 2 to virulence can cause vaccine associated disease and the wild type polio infections are rare okay all you need to remember is the type 1 that's uh 85% of the paralytic polio is due to type 1 okay we have i think four um stages of polio we have the asymptomatic the abortive the non paralytic and the paralytic polio now look at the asymptomatic illness they are 90% the viral infection is limited only to the oropharynx and the gut. Okay? The abortive poliomyelitis, that's the minor illness, that's 5%. They are described as having a non-specific febrile illness. The patient can develop a fever, headache, malaise, sore throat, and vomiting. And this one occur within the four to three to four days of exposure. Oh, class. Look, fever, headache, malaise, sore throat, and vomiting. All COVID-like symptoms, right? Uh, but don't worry, wala tayong pwedeng i-consider na polio dito sa Philippines kasi totally eradicated na. But for the purpose of discussion, let's continue with the clinical syndromes. The third, which comprises or 1-2% to 2 of your uh, polio would be na non-paralytic poliomyelitis or aseptic meningitis. Meaning, when you say aseptic, there's no involvement of any infection Pero namaga ang meninges mo. The virus progresses into CNS and the meninges. And that after, uh, aside from these minor symptoms, you develop back pain and muscle spasms. Okay? So actually, majority na to, 95, 96, 97%. Now look at the paralytic polio. That's the major illness if the, that virus is not controlled. Your paralytic polio is the most severe outcome, has the most severe outcome. It comprises of your 0.1 to 2% of the entire polio infection. It appears three to four days after the minor illness has subsided, producing a biphasic illness. So, hindi mo alam kung mag-recover ka o mag ka sa uh, complicated part. It is spreads from blood to anterior horn cells of the spinal cord and to the motor cortex of the brain. Thus, meron kang paralysis. The paralytic poliomyelitis, now as described here, is characterized by asymmetric flaccid paralysis with no sensory loss. Doc, but no sensory loss. So meron kang pakiramdam, pero you cannot move it because it affects the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. Ano ulit yung anterior horn cells? These are your motor um, part of your spinal cord. The paralysis may then progress over the first few days 
and may result in complete recovery, residual paralysis, or even death. But most of the polio infection, they recovered completely, but not to the point that they can walk. Now, some of the polio victims are they're not wheelchair, they're wheelchair bound. No, some naman um, are very inspirational. Some of the polio victims in the Philippines uh, are included in the Paralympics in Olympics. No, uh, they have this Paralympics for the person with disabilities. And some of the polio patients in the field, I, I saw some of the members of the uh, Paralympic uh, group of the Paralympic team of the Philippines, they recovered from, from polio. Yun nga lang, nagkaroon talaga sila ng motor deficits. Okay? Yeah, these are common examples. This is not in the Philippines. This is uh, before it's widespread in um, uh, South Africa, okay? in African countries. But they're totally eradicated because of the vaccine. What about this one? I got this one. If you look uh, at the legs of this patient, no, sabi nga natin, it's motor, para paralyzed sila. Kaya yung muscle niya, look at the muscle, nag-atrophy na. Ibig sabihin ng atrophy, uh, since hindi na siya nakalakad, wala na siya activity, nagagamit yung muscles niya, kaya nag-atrophy or lumiit yung muscle because of uh, disuse, no? because of the paralysis brought about by the polio infection. Okay, meron tayong tinatawag, guys, na bulbar poliomyelitis. This can be severe. It involves the muscles of the pharynx, the vocal cords, and the worst, respiratory muscles. This may result in death in 75% of patients. But this is not common anymore because of the uh, development of vaccines, oral polio vaccines. Your post-polio syndrome, that's a sequelae of your poliomyelitis. When I say sequelae, these are the uh, complications of your polio myelitis. They may occur much later in life. In 29% of the original victims of poliovirus, they suffer a deterioration of the originally affected muscles. Thus, they, um, they present with uh, muscle atrophy. Okay? You, as I mentioned kanina with this picture, poliovirus is not present anymore, but due to the loss of neurons of initially affected nerves, they present with this type of muscular atrophy. Okay? Sometimes they can move this muscle, but generally they're paralyzed. Na. So even walking or sitting, they don't use that uh, leg muscles anymore. That's atrophy. Okay, how can polyvirus diagnose? They may be isolated first from the pharynx during the first few days of illness from the feces for as long as it's 30 days. And as you all know, it goes to our spinal cord, but we rarely see um, CSF infection. Um, we, we rarely get CSF as means of diagnosing poliovirus. So we usually di diagnose it uh, through um, isolation of the virus and signs and symptoms. Uh, the virus grows well in monkey kidney tissue culture, but uh, since uh, polio, polio is eradicated now in the Philippines, you don't usually encounter um, patients with polio right now. Okay, How do we treat, prevent, and control paralytic, uh, par polio, paralytic polio? Uh, that's sabi nga dito, it's one of the triumphs of modern medicine. Because of the, in the advent of virus, it is now controlled. By 1979, infections with the wild-type polio disappeared from the U.S. and the new worldwide vaccination programs have been developed to reach that goal. There are two types of poliovirus, FYI. There are inactivated polio and you have the live attenuated oral polio vaccine. Now, they are both, uh, the, the inactivated polio is developed by Jonas Salk while the live vaccine is developed by Albert Sabin. Okay? In the Philippines, now please take note of this. In the expanded program on immunization of the Philippines, uh, this is a program of DOH. Uh, one dose of inactivated polio vaccine is introduced in the routine immunization schedule. Okay? Now, in addition, with three doses of bivalent oral polio vaccine, this will serve as a crucial step in really eliminating 
uh, all forms of polio disease and securing a polio-free world. Well, congratulations to to all of us in modern medicine. Polio is now eradicated in the Philippines. Ayan, this is an example. And polio now, wala pang COVID dito, I assume. Kasi wala pang mga mask yan, mga yan. No? Halos lahat sila nakanganga. Pero dapat, yung bata lang. No? <laughs> okay. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Um, huwag nyo nang aralin to. Okay? Uh, all you need to know is that there is an oral polio vaccine and inactivated polio vaccine. Okay, the advantages more 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 importantly, there are advantages, no? Uh the IPV is given kasi uh, it's more painful than oral administration. They require sterile syringes while the OPV or the oral polio vaccine, they are all safe but except for the immunodeficient patients. No, oral polio vaccine kasi is um uh, what's this? Hindi na siya masyadong ginagamit sa mga immune deficient. Sino ba itong mga immune deficient patients? Cancer patients, um, HIV, uh, AIDS. Now, these are immunocompromised patients. Not, uh, in, not recommended sa mga immune deficient. Okay, example of a polo case. A 12-year-old girl from Nepal developed headache, fever, nausea, and stiff neck. No? That's, that's one of the uh, common... Uh, Finding of a meningitis, symptoms improve and then recur several days later with weakness and paralysis of her legs. As we mentioned, virus, there's no antibiotics. We can diagnose this one as a case of really polio uh, based on signs and symptoms. No, uh, no antibiotics is used. Uh, your clue here is fever, stiff neck, and then recover and then come back after with weakness and paralysis neck. She has no history of polio immunization. Thus, we can diagnose this one as a perfect case of a polio virus. <clears throat> okay. Now, next of the P. coronavirus, sorry, of the enteroviruses would be Yorokoksaki virus and Echovirus. Yorokoksaki virus is divided into two groups. We have Koksaki virus A and B. Okay. Your herpangina. That's also known as your vesicular pharyngitis, hand, foot, and mouth disease, and acute hemorrhagic conjunctivitis are caused by certain Coxsackie A serotypes. Okay? Coxsackie group A serotypes. While your Coxsackie group B, they, are, they cause pleurodynia or epidemic myalgia, myocarditis, pericarditis, and some general uh, severe disease of the inf infants, usually Coxsackie B. Okay? Again, there are two types, A and B. So let's talk about this one by one. Now, generally, the characteristics of your Coxsackie virus, the incubation period is or ranges from two to nine days. Okay? The clinical manifestation of infection with virus Coxsackie viruses are diverse, no? meaning they are not just uh, specific for this, and they may present as distinct disease entities. Now, it's not just Coxsackie, but you also have to consider other viral infection. For the Coxsackie virus, it has been recovered from the blood in the early stages of natural infection in humans. Now, the virus is also found in the throat for a few days early in the infection and in the stools for up to five to six weeks. Now, this is different. During the first few days, if the patient presents with the following, mamaya, isa -isa natin, you, may, you may have a throat swab if you want to check for a coxsack type of virus. But if you want to use your stool, the stool, uh, the virus in the stool will be up until six weeks. Okay? All right, let's start with the clinical syndromes. This is herpangina. Okay, this is caused by several types of Coxsackie virus type A. They are not related to herpes virus infection. Take note, they, presents, they present with fever, sore throat, pain on swallowing, anorexia, and vomiting. But the classic finding of herpangina is a vesicular ulcerated lesions around the soft palate and uvula. They are self-limited and requires only symptomatic management Example of her herpangina are these arrows. If you look at it, 
closely, these are the dots, rashes na nasa oropharyngeal area. Um, honestly speaking, they really look like tonsillopharyngitis. It's, it's, it's a bacterial infection. Now, what's, what are your clues here? Um, aside from these rashes, um, dapat meron talagang ulcerated lesion. Okay? Vesicular ulcerated lesion. The one, the, the, the acute tonsillopharyngitis that is caused by bacteria, uh, usually it's exudative. More of nana yung lumalabas. But uh, the classic finding for herpangina is really a vesicular na at ulcerated lesion pa. Saan? Soft palate and uvula. This is the uvula. This is the soft palate. The rashes that is uh, pointed by white arrows are your herpangina lesions. Okay. Um, treatment, no antibiotics, just purely supportive treatment. Okay? Only symptomatic. Right? Pwede yung bigyan ng antihistamine, fever, paracetamol, uh, increased fluid intake, or if ever yung bata eh, hindi na masyadong kumakain, uh, let the patient be admitted for hydration and observation. Okay, next clinical syndrome would be hand, foot, and mouth disease. This is one of the most common uh, cases seen at the pediatric emergency room. The vesicular exam, this vesicular exantem or HFM is caused by Coxsackie virus A16. Main features of this infection consist of vesicular lesions on hands, feet, mouth, and tongue. Uh, it is also accompanied by mild fever and the illness subsides in days. Now, in this type of hand, foot, and mouth disease, ito po ang itsura niya. Oops, meron sa kamay. Meron sa legs, meron sa foot, meron din sa uh, mouth. So typical, this is a hand, foot, and mouth disease. Um, Kailangan antibiotics? No, it's caused by Coxsackie virus A. But if you want to really diagnose this one uh, serologically, meaning blood test, CBC, uh, if you request for a complete blood count, hindi natin makikita na this is Coxsackie virus. If you want to know that this is really Coxsackie virus, um, you want to diagnose it with true antibody. No? Magpapasyak ka na antibody screening or RT-PCR ng uh, lesions na yan. But um, to tell you honestly, if ever nakoksaki nga yan o hindi ka magpagawa ng viral culture, the treatment is still the same. No? Your clue here is that meron siya sa mouth, sa hands, and sa feet. Thus, the term hand, foot, and mouth disease. But as a medical laboratory scientist, this is caused by Coxsackie virus type A16. Okay. Right. Next clinical syndrome would be the pleurodynia. This is also known as your Bornholm disease. This is also known as your devil's grip. No? It is caused by Coxsackie virus B. It is presented with an acute illness with sudden onset to fever. And look at this pleurodynia. They have unilateral low thoracic excruciating pleuritic chest pain. Okay? Not just chest pain and fever, usually meron siya abdominal pain, vomiting, and tender in muscles, and this one will only last for an average of four days. They may relapse after being asymptomatic for several days, but the treatment for this is usually pain reliever because of the fever and chest pain and hydration. Again, there is no antibiotic for this clinical syndrome, which is a Coxsackie virus type P. Okay? For myocardial and pericardial infections that's caused by a Coxsackie B, it's actually most threatening in newborns. No? They will present with a febrile illness, meaning there is a fever, sudden and unexplained onset of heart failure. An example of a symptom of a heart failure is shortness of breath, difficulty of breathing, um, Pwedeng, yung, talagang may failure sa heart in pumping blood out of the heart. So, nagkakaroon ng dumping ng blood sa, sa heart mismo. Uh, it can also can cause cyanosis, tachycardia, cardiomegaly, hepatomegaly. Why, doc? but may hepatomegaly? Pag may, pag may uh, myocarditis or any type of infection sa heart. Because hindi na maka-absorb, hindi na maka-kuha maka, maka pa ng blood 
coming from the different system uh, from different blood vessels kasi yung heart mo hindi na masyadong makapag-function so meron na ring dumping of the blood sa liver that's the term hepatomegaly and look there are only newborns if you have patients suffering from cardiomegaly and heart failure sa uh, infants the the uh, usually the the symptoms of the patient really persist and becomes complicated kapag meron ng ibang organs being damaged Okay, if they have high mortality, usually multiple organ failure, including the following the following um, organs such as the brain, liver, and pancreas. Uh, in acute benign pericarditis, affects young adults naman, but can also be seen in older person. The the symptoms of this myocarditis and pericarditis in adults resemble those of a MI. Ibig sabihin ng MI yung myocardial infarction or heart attack, pero may fever. Okay? You think of an acute benign pericarditis if the patient presents with chest pain, difficulty of breathing, and then in the ECG, it's really acute myocardial infarction. But if the patient presents with fever, you think of Coxsackie virus. Okay? Okay, what else? A viral aseptic meningitis. This is an acute febrile illness accompanied by headache. Signs of meningeal irritation, which includes our nuchal rigidity. Now, this is um, uh, that's the triad actually of meningitis: fever, headache, and nuchal rigidity. Again, fever, headache, and nuchal rigidity. In some case of enteroviral meningitis, a rash or a petechial rash can also occur. No, um, Coxsackie viruses A21 and A24 as well as echoviruses 11 and 20 can cause rhinovirus-like symptoms resembling the common cold. So don't mention, don't mind this one. Okay, uh, It just states here that in viral meningitis, the most common would be the enterovirus type. Now, it can also cause Coxsackie virus and echovirus. But again, when you, when you are entertaining a viral meningitis, there is no antibiotics required. Okay, here, how do we diagnose uh, the CSF from enterovirus aseptic meningitis or viral meningitis? Your CSF would um, uh, have this characteristic. They don't have neutrophils. They lack neutrophils. The glucose level is usually normal or low. The protein level is normal to a slightly elevated. And they are rarely positive for the virus. Usually, uh, if you take sample from the cerebrospinal fluid, if you are entertaining a viral meningitis, these are the three most common results. They don't have neutrophils, glucose is normal or low, but the protein is usually slightly elevated. <clears throat> okay, in, in general, the Coxsackie virus and the echoviruses can usually be isolated from the throat and stool during the time of infection. But if there is uh, patients presenting with meningitis, as mentioned, with fever, headache, and nuclear rigidity, CSF sample should be obtained. Okay? Coxsackie virus B can be grown on primary monkey or human embryo kidney cells if you want to culture the, the throat sample or stool sample. And many strains of Coxsackie virus A can be grown in suckling mice. Now, usually these are just... Uh, in the laboratory the, um, diagnosis that they just use mice before. But due in the advent of different human infection, uh, we can actually diagnose this one based on the viral culture and clinical signs and symptoms. Okay, for treatment, prevention, and control, there are no vaccines or antiviral drugs that are currently available for prevention of Coxsackie viruses. We just treat them symptomatically or self-limited. Improvements is also suggested in hygiene and living conditions because really, uh, these viruses can be, uh, the mode of transmission is ingestion or inhalation. Okay. Oops, sorry. All right. <laughs> Next of the picornavirus is rhinovirus. Now, this is your common cold. 
uh, viral factors such as they're resistant to drying and detergents. They have multiple serotypes. Uh, the replication occurs at an optimum temperature of 32 degrees Celsius and cooler temperatures. They're more common. Transmission is due to one direct contact by infected hands and fomites. What are fomites? These are actually, um, how can I describe this? Uh, things that uh, na masyad, na hinahawahan ninyo and then usually infected or, or not sanitized. Cell phones, no, uh, gadgets, anything. Kaya ngayon mas conscious na tayo when it comes to uh, when it comes to germs. No, alcohol here and there. Kaya kailangan talaga mag uh, hand washing. No, through through a an effective hand washing, many viruses will be prevented. No, one transmission of your rhinovirus is inhalation of infectious droplets. Yes, who is at risk? Persons of all ages. Uh, this virus is found worldwide and this disease is more commonly in early autumn and late spring. And sabi nga dito, modes of control, washing hands and disinfecting the contaminated objects. That will help prevent spread. Okay, as mentioned kanina, the, the rates of infection, look, they are highest in infants and children. Children less than two years old share their colds with their families. So, Let's stop, let's prevent the, the contamination or spread sa bahay pa lang. Okay? Um, asymptomatic persons are also capable of spreading the virus. When we're, we are really talking about the virology or virus, uh, you think of COVID, right? So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the clinical syndromes, usually the common cold symptoms caused by rhinovirus. And actually, you cannot readily be distinguished from those caused by other viral respiratory pathogens. Tama. Diba? Uh, pwedeng influenza na caused by bacteria, rhinovirus. Kaya at the end of this lecture, gamitin nyo na yung word na rhinovirus. This is the common cold. The, it usually begins with sneezing, which is soon followed by rhinorrhea or um, uh, nasal dripping and eventually symptoms of nasal obstruction or nasal congestion. If you have uh, sipon or common colds, usually you have also have mild sore throat, sometimes headache, malaise or body weakness, pero wala kang fever. Mainit yung mata mo, but you don't have fever. The illness peaks into uh, three to four days and cough and nasal symptoms may persist actually for seven to ten days or longer. If your um, primary healthcare physician or doctor diagnosed with just common colds or upper respiratory tract infection viral, don't expect that that doctor will give you antibiotics. As mentioned so many times during my lecture, um, viral infections are not uh, treated with antibiotics, just supportive treatment. Again, lab diagnosis and is unnecessary. Pero if you know that the signs and symptoms of your patient really is only for common colds, Technically, you diagnose now yourself. No need for lab, uh, laboratory workups. And how do we treat, prevent, and control rhinovirus? Many over-the-counter remedies for the common cold. Usually, what, what, what provides us relief are the nasal vasoconstrictors or the nasal decongestants. Inhaling hot, humidified air, and even steam from hot chicken soup may actually help by increasing nasal drainage. So usually kapag may nasal congestion ka, you need decongestant. And these are actually uh, some of the recommendations. Uh, ultimately, the, the most uh, common one is the hand washing and disinfection of contaminated objects are the best means to prevent viral spread. And virucidal facial tissues impregnated with citric acid may also limit the spread. But I don't think this is uh, evidence-based. But the hand washing and disinfection is really the key to uh, prevent and control your rhinovirus. It's the most, it's not the good candidate for a vaccine program. Okay, why? Multiple serotypes, number one, and other some common causes of cold. No, it can be a, a enterovirus, coxsackie virus. No, and dami mo pwedeng maging variant of concern. But for the rhinovirus, you cannot have a vaccine program because of this. They have multiple serotypes. Um, apparently, 
the antigenic drift in rhinoviral antigen. When you say antigenic drift, uh, there are some antigens from the other viruses, uh, like influenza, not influenza virus, can uh, have a, a co-contamination or co-infection with rhinoviral in, in antigens. Uh, requirement is for circulatory IgA production and transient in antibody response. So you cannot, we cannot really develop vaccine for the common colds, just for the flu or influenza. Kaya nga may flu vaccine tayo. And mind you, flu vaccines are recommended yearly because of the different variants of concern. <clears throat> okay. So that ends the Picornavira Day. Let's go now to your Kalichi. It's also the naked icosahedral capsid single stranded positive RNA genome. Okay, just like in the table. Na to, no, it's naked icosahedral positive single stranded RNA. Okay, in the Kalichi viridae, there are five genera. We have the norovirus, the sapo virus. Uh, Lago, Vesi virus, and Nebo virus. But usually, it is the Sapo and the Norwalk are the most common. Yeah, and you may ask the risk. The hosts are human, bovine, and pig. Human and pig, then ang Sapporo Kalichi virus. Sapporo meaning sa Japan na detect. First detect ang Kalichi virus. So we'll be talking about Norovirus and Sapo virus. These are the human Kalichi viruses. They cause acute gastroenteritis. And please take note of this. The Norwalk virus is the most common cause of viral gastroenteritis in adults. Okay? If you are diagnosed with viral gastroenteritis, um, there's no antibiotic treatment, but usually the Norwalk virus is the most common. What's the most common cause of viral gastroenteritis in children? It's actually um, rotavirus. Thus, the uh, development of rotavirus vaccine. Because that's the most common uh, cause of uh, acute gastroenteritis in less than five years old. Kaya dapat merong rotavirus ang mga patient or children less than five years old. Okay, again, Norwalk virus, most common cause of viral gastroenteritis in adults. For children, it's rotavirus. Okay, what else? Uh, sporadic endemic cases affecting children five years of age, younger, five years of age, but no, noroviruses are the most are, are the most common cause of gastroenteritis outbreaks, mostly with contaminated water, again. And food, particularly shellfish. Oh, my shellfish. Kanya pa siya napapag-usapan. Okay, pathogenesis on why they are the most common cause of AGE. The histoblood group antigens or HPGA on enterocyte surface access host receptor. Now, this activities such as sucrase, trehalase, and alkaline phosphatase from the intestinal brush border of your symptomatic patients are decreased now. Now, when they are decreased, they will induce a malabsorptive state. When there is malabsorption, from the word itself, malabsorption, there are no reabsorption of your uh, food that we took. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, oops, hindi mababawasan. Magiging oops ta, mag, mag increase palalo yung activity ng uh, bowel movement natin. Thus, magkakaroon ka ng diarrhea. The blood, the brush border function is compromised by disinfection of your Kalichi or Norwalk virus, preventing a proper absorption of water and nutrients, hence diarrhea. So eventually, kapag may diarrhea ka, magkakaroon ka rin ng acute or mild to moderate dehydration. Now, if there is um, brush border uh, abnormality, the delayed gastric emptying time, meaning sa stomach, walang masyadong uh, hindi ka masyadong ma-absorb ma kasi nga may malabsorption. Not just diarrhea. The patient with AGE that is caused by Norwalk or norovirus can actually present with vomiting. And now this patient will be managed through IV. Kasi nga nagvomit ka na, nagda-diarrhea ka pa. 
So dapat magkaroon ka na ng IV hydration because some time in your in uh, in your uh, during the time of infection dehydration is uh, common. So magkaharo ka ng hypovolemic shock, septic shock, meaning yung katawan mo eh, kala, eh imbalance na. Mababa ang blood pressure, mabilis ang timok ng puso. So kailangan uh, ma-address na agad yan. Okay? Alright, look. Incubation period is only 12 to 60 hours. So usually it persists at least seven days. And if you have a chronic diarrhea, usually it will last up to two months. But usually when you have viral infection, uh, mabilis na yan ma-address. Ma no? The self-limited episode of non-bloody diarrhea, sometimes it lasts for one to two days in outbreak, pero in endemic cases, usually five to six days. Sabi nga dito, that's the most common cause of non-bacterial or viral diarrhea in adults. Uh, children older than one year of age, vomiting predominates. Infants and adults can actually can cause Uh, Norwalk or Kalisha virus, pero the most common would be the rotavirus for children. Systemic infections, such as your febrile and non-febrile seizures, during this gastroenteritis have also been described. Pero ito yung mga uncontrolled na. Kasi nga, meron ka ng mga fever, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, you lost electrolytes. And then, these electrolytes are more commonly um, found No, uh, in our cells, kapag sobra kang nagkaroon ng imbalance sa, sa electrolytes, you can develop seizure. Okay, how do we diagnose um, or laboratory identify the Kalichi virus? The most sensitive test is the real-time quantitative, the uh, RT-PCR assay or the reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. Uh, genotyping based on the capsid gene, particularly in the region B of the virus, That will allow better discrimination between the strains. Enzyme immunoassays for stool antigen detection have been developed and commercial kits are currently available, usually for screening. But in, in, um, in the Philippines, we can actually detect rotavirus through antigen and antibody detection, through RT-PCR and ELISA or enzyme immunoassays. Uh, because di ba nga, nagkaroon na ng vaccine development We can able we can in some major hospitals and tertiary hospitals, uh, we can detect rotavirus antigen and antibodies based on the blood and based on the stool culture. All right, now next, under Kalichi virus, it's not just the Norwalk; it's also the hepatitis E virus. Okay, in hepatitis E, sometimes it's more common some outbreaks. Outbreaks occurring in developing countries, in refugee camps, with suboptimal food and water sanitation, resulting in acute, self-limiting disease. Teens and young adults are most commonly affected. Mortality is rare except in pregnant women. Hepatitis E virus does not progress to chronic infection except for those immunocompromised individuals such as, again, your cancer patients, your HIV and AIDS patients. Nagkakaroon sila ng chronic hepatitis E infection. So if you notice, your chronic, uh, your hepatitis A and hepatitis E, they're more of a fecal oral route. No? Contamination of food and water. Uh, chronic hepatitis E is associated with an impaired HEV specific PISA responses in organ transplant recipients. So, okay, Uh, hindi lang pala cancer patients or uh, those with HIV and AIDS uh, when you say immunocompromise. When you say immunocompromise, uh, please also include the organ transplant recipients. No? They are immunocompromised. All right, look at the picture. That's the initial symptoms of uh, acute hepatitis E, flu-like myalgia, arthralgia, weakness, and vomiting. Okay? So the usual viral infection. But in, in some patients, they could present jaundice, itching, uncolored stools, that's your A. colic stools, darkened urine, accompanied by increased levels of liver transaminases, bilirubin, alkaline phosphatase, and gamma glutamyl transpeptidase. So basically, um, liver ang problem na naman when it comes to acute hepatitis E. 
the, none of the hepatitis virus replicates in the standard cultural cell lines. But if you want to detect again, hepatitis E, detection of this specific isogen and IgG are suggested, which designates the stage of infection with each viruses. Um, acute HEV infection is diagnosed in immunocompetent individuals based on detection of its antibodies. Okay? But uh, increased titers of IgG can it also indicate a recent HEV infection. So, Dr. Sabino, IgG, past infection or recovery phase. Yes, um, kapag IgM and IgG are positive, that indicate a recent HEV infection. But when you are H I um, IgM positive and IgG negative, you are in an acute infection. Meron kapang infection which is active, which is highly infectious. Okay. All right, viral load assessment is used to monitor response to treatment of chronic infection. And this RNA can be detected in the blood and stool for several weeks during an acute hepatitis E viral infection. Okay, this table will just show you, look at the IG, uh, hepatitis A, um, IgM, and IgG can cause hepatitis A. Can, uh, this can also be used to diagnose hepatitis A. Uh, Anti-HEV, this one is hepatitis E. Uh, you use IgM and IgG to detect what stage of infection with each virus. So if you sometimes, if you are entertaining hepatitis A, uh, you also include hepatitis E because no? they have the same manner of transmission, they have the same uh, fecal-oral route, they have the same type of diagnosis. But they don't. They belong to different viral group. Hepatitis A belongs to the coronavirus, while your hepatitis E belongs to your Kalichi viridae or Kalichi virus. Okay, how do you treat, prevent, and control hepatitis E? It's usually clear spontaneously, just like the any other viral infection. Um, it is still controversial. The administration of interferon alpha or rivavirin, these are antiviral medications, is still controversial. Vaccinations are still being developed and recovery from HIV infection results in protective immunity. Well, um, HIV or hepatitis E is not that common again uh, as opposed to hepatitis uh, B, C, and A. Not A, B, and C. But um, if you want to be diagnosed with HEPA E, and if you notice, oh, parehas ang pala uh, the diagnostic tools for HEPA A. No, if if your patient presents with the same symptoms just like HEPA A, I advise or recommend that you screen also a patient with HEPA E, you no know, hepatitis E infection or anti HEV, IgM or IgG. Okay, that ends our picoinaviruses and Kalichi viruses lecture. Thank you for listening.